Welcome to our worship service on this fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. We'll begin our morning with our first hymn, hymn 743. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. 
We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by His death on the cross and freed us from death by His resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your almighty power, you opened the eyes of the blind and showed yourselves to them. Turn our eyes away from worthless things and lead us to love you sincerely. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading for the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent is taken from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 42. In a picturesque way, Isaiah talks about God taking us blinded in our unbelief into the light of faith. I have been silent for a long time. I have kept still. I have restrained myself. But now, like a woman giving birth, I will scream. I will gasp and pant. I will dry up mountains and hills. I will make all their grass wither. I will turn rivers into islands. I will dry up pools. I will lead the blind on a way they do not know. Along paths they do not know, I will direct them. Ahead of them, I will turn darkness into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things I will accomplish for them. I will not abandon them. They will be turned back and completely disgrace those who trust in an idol. Those who say to molten images, you are our gods. You deaf ones, listen. You blind ones, watch carefully so that you can see. Who is as blind as my servant? Who is as deaf as my messenger whom I sent? Who is as blind as my associate, as blind as the servant of the Lord? You, Israel, see many things, but you do not observe. Israel opens his ears, but he does not hear. Because of his own righteousness, the Lord was pleased to make his law great and glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now join in singing the psalm of the day, Psalm 27.
second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 5. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, awake sleeper, rise from the dead, Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Please rise as we sing the gospel acclamation. Gospels, front of the Gospel, according to St. John, chapter 9. As Jesus was passing by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that God's works might be revealed in the connection with him. I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Go, Jesus told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. They brought this man who had been blind to the Pharisees. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man told them. I washed, now I see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others were saying, How can a sinful man work such miraculous signs? There was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. The man replied, he is a prophet. They answered him, you were entirely born in sinfulness, yet you presume to teach, you presume to teach us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he asked, do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, sir? The man replied, that I may believe in him. Jesus answered, you have seen him, and he is the very one who is speaking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he knelt down and worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world in order that those who do not see will see. And those who do see will become blind. The Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning is the epistle lesson of the day, taken from the, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from dead. Christ will shine on you. In the name of our Savior, dear children of God, it is a picture that maybe you have lived or maybe have seen. But a child is going off to college and they're in the driveway with the car all packed. And mom and dad are out there for the final hugs and shakes and goodbye kisses. And the father puts his hand on the child's shoulder and says, remember whose child you are. Saying so much with so few words. We are children of the Heavenly Father. And we are temporarily away from home. And that we are able to call ourselves children of God in and of itself is an incredible gift. We, we marvel with John when he writes, See the kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Each of us a child of God, or in the picture of our text, a child of the light. And all because of Jesus. And your father, again and again and again, in the pages of Scripture, in a way, puts his hand on you and says, remember whose child you are. He says to us, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Your brother Jesus says, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So how have things been going? Have you been acting like a child of your Father in heaven? Has your day-to-day -day life been reflecting who you are? Are you still loyal to the name that you carry? Do you always remember that what you do in life not only reflects on you, but more importantly, reflects on your Father in heaven? Well, our Father says to us again this morning, the scripture here in Ephesians, remember whose child you are. Because there was a time in all of our lives that we were not children of God. We were again, as it's pictured in our text, children of darkness. And darkness can be a very uneasy place to be, even a, a scary place to be. We, we get a sense of that just by experiencing darkness in our world, physical darkness. If you've ever been in, in a very, very dark room or dark place, you know that you can't see anything. And as you move around, you bump into everything. In a way, in the darkness, we are standing there waiting for the next thing to come at us, the, the next thing to hurt us and harm us. To live in the darkness is really a life of uncertainty. Life separate from God. But by God's grace, he did something for you. 
For many of us, he placed us in a Christian family where through that family, a mother and father brought you up maybe to this very baptismal font and you were baptized. And through that baptism, God took you out of the darkness of unbelief and placed you into the light of life. Or maybe God had or gave you a very good friend or somebody else in your life that, that shared with you the gospel and through that message the Holy Spirit brought you into the light out of the darkness. And it's interesting here in the text, it doesn't say necessarily that we are brought into the light. It says you were made light, you became light. That's what God did for each one of us. And if there was nothing else God would do in life for you, that gives you more than enough reason to praise him, to thank him. Because while it doesn't take much to look out into our world today to see people who are still bumping around in the darkness. But you know where you're going the day you die. You know that as you go to bed at night, you can say, Dear God, forgive all my sins, and they are forgiven. You know God has worked a faith in your heart through your baptism that now as you hear the gospel, he is strengthening and building. He's done all that for you. And again, if that's the only thing he did for us, we'd have more than enough reason to gather here on a Sunday morning, really to gather together every day to thank and praise him for making us one of his children. That's who you are. God now says to you, live as a child of light, as a child of God. Paul says in our text, try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. To the Romans he wrote, do not continue to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you test and approve what the will of God is. What is good, pleasing, perfect. See, to, to live as a child of God really starts with God's word. So many today think that they can live life by their gut feelings, their emotions. They'll always know what's right and what's wrong, but your emotions and your opinions and your gut is many times wrong. We ride that emotional a roller coaster where sometimes we feel I'm right on this, I know I'm right on this, but at the same time, sometimes you look and say, No, I'm not right on this. Your emotions and your opinions can be pressured by many of the things that are around us in this world. And so we cannot base our understanding of right and wrong, good and true, on a feeling on our own knowledge. But, but listen, listen to Joseph when, when he was uh, tempted by Potiphar's wife. What did, what did he say? He said, how then could I do such a great evil and sin against God? She, what she was asking him to do, he didn't say, well, how could I do this great evil and sin against my own conscience? That didn't make any difference. How could I do this great evil and sin against what I know Potiphar wouldn't want me to do? That didn't make any difference either. He knew what God had to say. And as a child of God, he struggled day by day to live a life that was pleasing not to Potiphar, not to himself, not to the world, but to God. So Paul says in our text, do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Stay away from all of those things. And you know, you know what they are. 
and nothing good comes from them. Think about the broken lives, the broken bodies, the broken relationships, the broken families. The list goes on and on and on of all the broken things in our world brought about because of the fruitless deeds, as Paul would say, of darkness. But there's something inside of us that when we hear God say and teach us his commandments and how he wants us to live, we say, but I don't like that. I don't, that. God's holding out on us. God's keeping us from having fun. No, what God is doing is keeping you from destroying yourself. And yet, because of our sinful nature, we don't think that way. We don't see him as a loving God who is saying, just stay away. No, we rebel. We dive right in. But our text says more than just stay away. Paul writes, instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But we tend not to mention them, don't we? More and more today, the world is allowed to define terms, sugarcoat things, give, give things different names so hey, it doesn't sound so bad. So now we have alternate lifestyles and committed relationships. And, and the list goes on and on and on of all the different new names we have for sin. And if you don't give it the bad name, then it doesn't sound so bad. Almost sounds acceptable. Almost sounds reasonable. But no matter what the world might call something, God's word, light, continues to expose things. Paul says, isn't that what light does? When you shine the light of God's word on things, you, you begin to see things for what they really are. That pornography and homosexuality and sexual abuse and adultery are not just different ways of doing things, different viewpoints, different lifestyles. They're stumbling around in the darkness of this world. The same with greed and drunkenness and gossiping. And the list goes on and on from the Word of God. They're not just things we do, things that people do, but sin. They're bumping around in the darkness of this world. Paul says we need to call them what they are. And if we see them in each other's lives and, and know them in our own lives, we need to expose them. Might that be embarrassing? Yes. But always understand the reason that we talk about them is that we need to understand that they are sinful. That they are something that we need to repent of. And it's not to embarrass somebody, it's not to make somebody lower than anybody else, but it's simply to give them a chance to repent that they might hear from your lips, your sins are forgiven. But don't we have a hard time with that? Talk to one another about sin. And why is that? Well, I can think of maybe three reasons that maybe that would be hard. First of all, that, that we're not quite sure what God says. We've heard it from the world. We know what the world has to say. And, and, and that sits better with us. And, and we haven't really studied the scriptures enough to know what God has to say. So we don't say anything at all. Or maybe we see ourselves sliding into a lot of these things of darkness and don't want to be exposed ourselves, and so we just be quiet. 
Or, or maybe it is what we are warned about in the scriptures. That at the end of times, the love of most will grow cold. That we say in our hearts and our minds, well, I don't care what they do, just so they don't bother me with it. Whatever somebody wants to do in private, whatever everybody wants to do away from me that I don't have to bother with it, let them. And who cares if it ends up in hell? Well, if we see those attitudes in ourselves, and maybe if our love is starting to turn a bit cold for the people around us, care, concern, time for us to repent too. To understand the kind of person God wants us to be as his children, as children of the light. To be honest with ourselves, to be honest with each other, so that one might repent and know that we are forgiven. That's the ultimate goal and where we want to go. Doesn't mean we're ever going to live a perfect life. That, that will never happen. Christian life is really a life of struggle against sin and temptation. But as Luther said, it's also a life of repentance. That we don't forget that sin is still sin because God calls it sin. And it's nothing we give in to. Say that's the way it is. It's nothing we give a new name to and forget about. As children of God, it's just something we repent of. On a Sunday morning, we're given the opportunity at the beginning of the service to stand before God and say, as we used to say years ago, I a poor, miserable sinner. And then to hear from the pastor, is it from God himself? Because that's all he's doing, is sharing with you what God says. Your sins are forgiven. And then taking that forgiveness that you know about and you trust in out into your world and to share it with others. You are the children of God. What grace, what love that God has given you, that that's who you are. Continue to struggle. Simply be who you are. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll now join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we now place the offering on the altar, and then we will pray. We come, O Savior, to your throne to give you of our treasure, who by your love which on the cross was given without measure, your love for us, paid out in blood, purchased our salvation, help then our love reflect your love till we live with you in heaven. Amen.
Gracious Lord, according to your will and promise, you sent your Son into our world to atone for sin and restore eternal life. You planned his path to the cross, and he followed it perfectly. Your Spirit led him to endure the temptations of Satan, but he triumphed. Your own people rejected his message, but he pre persevered. He confronted the blindness of unbelief, the confusion of doubt, and the hurt of death but was not deterred as he proclaimed your kingdom to the least, the last, and the lost. Guide us to follow Christ by faith as we walk the road of temptation and trial. Spare us from falling into Satan's traps and steal our resolve as his, par as his partners confront us. Teach us to use your word as a weapon to fight against all devilish lies and deceptions. And when we fail, and we surely will, lift us up again with your forgiveness and grace. Protect all who are bearing the cross of persecution and disdain. Supply your power to those fighting temptations and addictions. Watch over all who are sick and suffering in body, mind, and heart. We pray especially for children who are abused, forsaken, or ignored. Comfort all your troubled people with the sweet peace that only Jesus can bring. We praise you, O Lord, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Receive our thanks that you have brought Briggs Lucas Shutt and his mother Sydney safely through delivery. In your goodness, you have filled the hearts of this family with joy. Bless Briggs by caring for all his needs and watching over him with your protecting hand. As you gave your son to purchase Briggs for yourself, so also send your spirit through baptism that he may become a member of your family of faith. May Lucas and Sidney and this congregation lead Briggs to your saving love all his days, that you may preserve him with life that never ends. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for using us as instruments in your service to extend a divine call for, another, for two more teachers. Bless Alex Brown and McCord Johnson with the wisdom and maturity they need to consider where to serve you and your people. We trust that your Holy Spirit will bring us the very servants we need as we seek to serve you at this time and in this place. Give wisdom and resolve to the leaders of our government that their rule may bring prosperity to our land and peace to our people. Supply insights to those who seek cures and invent devices to make our lives on earth better and safer. Inspire creative minds to touch our hearts in ways that reflect your creating love. You desire that we bask in the glory of our redemption according to your will. May we also enjoy the wonders of your creation. Hear our prayers, Lord, for the sake of Jesus, whose journey to the cross we remember during the days of Lent. Comfort and strengthen us by his life and death on our behalf, and thrill us as we look forward to celebrating his victory on Easter. Amen. We continue with the next hymn.
We stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good morning uh, to each one of you. We thank uh, Morgan Haig and the, uh, Emma Weishella for the additional music in the post-service and pre-service. Uh, you're also reminded, it is in the bulletin, that next Sunday the concert choir from Luther High will be here for both services, 8 o'clock and 10.30, and they will be singing a number of their uh, songs uh, during the worship service. It won't be a, a whole concert, uh, but they are uh, talking... To Mr. Adix, they're going to sing a, a number of songs during the service and we'll work them in. So next Sunday, uh, both services, the concert choir from Luther High will be here. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> 